company has been transformed beyond all recognition, particularly in my region. It was a startup in the sense that we really needed to reboot the business. We have a very clear vision to spread the light and warmth of hospitality, and we have very clear strategic objectives. A big part of our uh, philosophy is around distributing leadership around the organisation. Yes, Nick, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, thank you for reminding me of my 10-year anniversary. If I look back to uh, June 2006 when I, uh, when I first agreed to join Hilton, um, Hilton was a very different company and uh, it was about to be acquired by Blackstone. Over the course of uh, uh, the last few years, the company has been transformed beyond all recognition, uh, particularly in my region, a large part of the uh, uh, the transformation uh, was taking our brands internationally. A lot of our brands have hitherto only been uh, resident in the United States of America and a big part of our plan was to expand our global footprint and uh, uh, the business in Europe, Middle East, Africa played a big role in that. After Blackstone acquired Hilton in 2007, the company was described to me as a 90-year-old startup. What challenges have you and the company faced? It was a startup in the sense that um, we really needed to reboot uh, the business. Um, in reality, we were taking two businesses that uh, hitherto had been very distinct. We had Hilton International and we had Hilton Hotels Corporation. The latter was owned um, by the, uh, the Hilton family, but also uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, and the former was obviously owned by Ladbrokes and listed on the London Stock Exchange. Blackstone bought the two businesses together and that's when the transformation of the business started really. And we had two businesses that were at different stages of their evolution. Uh, they had very different business models and um, uh, we needed to create a single identity for the business, align the culture and the organisation uh, and really uh, transform the business and I think um, that's what we've succeeded in doing over the course of the last uh, 10 years or so. We are sitting in the London Bankside Hilton and the company has an enviable reputation for great brands and management. What makes Hilton so successful? I think it is, as you say, uh, first and foremost, the strength of our brands. Customers love our brands and you only have to look at um, uh, the customer feedback that we get, uh, the RevPAR premiums that our brands enjoy over and above the competition. Each one of our individual brands and each of their customer segments enjoys a RevPAR premium over the competition. Uh, look at the strength of our commercial engines, our distribution systems, our loyalty programs, our sales, our marketing and our distribution capabilities. Uh, and above everything, I think, look at the strength of our people. Hilton is known as a people organisation. Um, you know, we take great pride in uh, training uh, our people, uh, putting them into leadership positions, allowing them to grow and allowing them to fulfil their potential within, uh, within what is a great organisation. And I think a combination of those strong brands, uh, the strong commercial engine and the strong people really makes Hilton what it is today. We have a very clear vision to spread the light and warmth of hospitality and we have very clear strategic objectives and I think you know, it's important that strategy is simple and very focused and you know, our strategy was all around aligning our culture and organisation in the first point around a clear vision uh, and a single culture. It was about maximising our performance, uh, it was about expanding our global footprint, taking our brands in the, into the international arena and also about strengthening our brands and our commercial services platform. And I think aligning the whole organisation behind that single vision and those four strategic imperatives was a very powerful uh, uh, force that actually um, helped the company evolve in the way that it has. We are all about hospitality. We are hospitality, we are Hilton. And that's what uh, we aim to do. And we aim to serve our guests and uh, hopefully they'll come back uh, and, uh, and stay with us and uh, stay with us over a lifetime. Um, now, I think our culture is absolutely defined by the word hospitality, but I think we also um, you know, operate to very high levels of integrity. I think we have a real sense of urgency in our business as well now in terms of um, getting things done. Uh, one of our core values is, is, is now, living in the moment, making things happen. Uh, driving performance uh, and I think um, you know our culture is uh, is definitely transformed over the course of, uh, of the last uh, the last few years 
giving people accountability, um, encouraging people to lead teams and lead them effectively. Really setting ambitious targets and letting people get on and deliver against those targets. I mean, a big part of our uh, philosophy is around distributing leadership around the organisation as well. Actually devolving decision making down to those parts of the operation that are best placed to make those decisions. You know, we're a global organisation now, we operate in more than 100 countries. You know, we've got over 4,300 hotels. Um, you know, a lot of that decision making has to be devolved down to the hotels and distributing leadership is a big part of our culture. Congratulations on your OBE for services to tourism. Can you comment on your career that resulted in this prestigious award? I've been in uh, the travel and hospitality sector for 30 years. Um, I started, uh, actually I started in banking and finance and in some ways I'm closer to my original roots than I have been before because a lot of our hotels are clearly financed by uh, financial institutions and um, ironically I actually started my career in real estate finance. Um, but. Um, that's by the by. I mean, I, I spent time at Thomas Cook. I latterly became Chief Operating Officer of the Travel Division. Uh, I then went on to become Chief Executive of Podo. Um, and then on to Hilton, where I've now been for, uh, for 10 years. And I guess in all of that time, you know, I've tried to do the right thing by the company that I'm working for, but also the right thing for the industry. And I've always tried to get myself uh, involved in industry issues uh, and uh, you know I have been uh, uh, on the board of the British Hospitality Association. I currently chair the Tourism Council uh, which is uh, an intergovernmental uh, um, council that is, uh, is seeking to raise the profile uh, of tourism uh, with, uh, with our government. I mean don't forget one in ten people uh, in the UK are probably employed in the hospitality and travel sector now. It's nearly 10% of GDP. It's an incredibly important industry and I think it's incumbent upon all of us that are in senior positions in uh, this industry to, to fly the flag for the business. And so I, I think I've made my contribution to the wider, uh, wider industry and um, you know, obviously I was uh, very honoured to be uh, recognised in that regard. You are also a non-executive director of the Queen's favourite grocer, Fortnum & Mason. How does your hospitality and travel experience contribute to the continued success? Uh, Fortnum & Mason is an incredible brand and an incredible business. It's been around for 300 years and the, uh, it's a family business and the family are absolutely committed to, uh, uh, to it thriving over the course of the next 300 years. It's a, it's a wonderful business, a wonderful brand uh, that cuts across uh, both hospitality and, uh, and retailing and uh, uh, I'm very proud to serve on the board there. It's, uh, it's an amazing business that um, has got tremendous potential. There's a real sense of pleasure mm. in the business and there's a real passion in the business for the products uh, and for uh, serving the customers. Very similar to, uh, to the hospitality business in that regard. 